This is Star Talk. This is from uh, John Huggins. John wants to know, in preparing to go to Mars, are there or will there be a need to be international treaties that dictate the governance of Mars? If yes, that would be the what would be the key aspects of those treaties? In other words, do we have a first of all, we've been on the moon. So I'm sure there's something that governs that. Not so really. Could, yeah. No, not really. Well, no, so no could, governs it. It says that you can't own cosmic objects. Okay. Yeah. So the inner space, the outer space treaty has provisions in it that says the sp- the universe is a frontier right and you can't own it you can't there's there's no sovereign control over it now at some point that's going to have to change right because Be- we have vladimir putin now <laughs> you go to mars and people start pitching their flag and they build a home well you can't say that no one owns the home i built the damn home that's true so what is likely or rather what is has been proposed okay. is that you put a homesteading kind of rule in place all right. The homesteading is if you paid the money to get there and you built your own damn house, that's your land. So Bill Gates will be owning Mars, <laughs> basically is what you just told me. Just the rich folks. Yes, Bill Gates and uh, Richard Branson. Well, they kind of do that. Richard Branson owns his own island, right? That's, that's your They're right. kind of already doing that. They kind of already do that. Right. But what it means is on that island, he hires servants and gardeners and everything. So there's a business case for people to do this. Right. And why did the United States promote homesteading? To spread the frontier, to exactly. move the frontier and and this is how you grow cities and communities and so it's it will I'm thinking it'll go that route. Cuz don't say, well, earth, we own all little patches of this speck called earth, but the whole universe no one owns it. You right. can, I I don't see that as the natural consequence of human exploration. Oh, or human nature. Or that, that's what I really meant to say. Because <laughs> the real deal is, from the time that we are little teeny kids, the first one of the first words we say or sentences is, "That's mine." That's right. That's, that's right. mine. <laughs> that's mine. Even when it's not yours, that's, yeah, it's yours. That's right. True. And 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 especially in America, what's the the one of the first games we learn how to play when we know how to play any good game? It's Monopoly. That's so true. And who wins? The one who has all, all the property. The f- <laughs> <laughs> It's not over until I win it all. Yes, I own everything, and you have nothing. nothing. Right? Oh my God! Right? Talk about talk and about we brainwashing. We celebrate this. We celebrate that, and we say, "Wow, you were good." <laughs> <laughs> that is like the height oh of my capitalism. God, you crushed me. <laughs> I'm a complete and utter pauper now. What, I was. When You're I was, good. When I was in graduate school, there was a fellow a graduate student who was from Russia. Right. And I was describing Monopoly to him, and when I got to that point. And the winner has all the money and all the property. <laughs> and I thought, wow, this is this is like before the Cold War ended, right? Right. And it was like it was not playing well in his no, because he was looking at you like you capitalist pig. <laughs> that's yeah, because that's basically wow. <laughs> I never looked at it that way, but that's a whoa. Now, let me tell you my favorite Monopoly joke. Go ahead. It was by um, what's the dude's name from Boston? Who's kind of surreal? Uh, Stephen Wright. Stephen Wright. Okay. Yeah. So he said. Uh, I'm I'm angry that only one company makes the game Monopoly. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good joke. That's isn't that good. That's, a, that's that, a good joke. That's I love the irony of it. This is Star Talk.